Making videos can be pretty hard. So if you would like to help support the Zerato Things YouTube channel, consider donating to the official Patreon. The Patreon has three tiers, and each tier will also grant you the benefits of the tiers below it. The $2 tier, or the Toonie tier, gives you access to new videos a day before they're released publicly. The $3 tier gives you access to a patron-exclusive Discord channel on the Zerottle Things Discord server, where some rules are slightly laxed. The $5 tier gets you access to Patreon-exclusive content, which includes behind-the-scenes content such as bloopers, videos that show how videos are edited, and readings of video script drafts. Any tier will get you a shout out in future videos, so if you have money to spare, please consider donating. Thank you. All pledge levels are in Canadian dollars, which will be converted appropriately by your payment provider. So the Artemis Fowl movie has come and gone, so here I am to give my thoughts on the movie. Oh, wait, it actually hasn't come and gone. The movie was delayed from August of last year to May of this year for some reason. But hey, at least it comes out nine days after my birthday. So what's this video about then if the movie hasn't come out yet? Well, I'm going to tell you guys my pre-release thoughts. First, I'll give you my thoughts in the trailer, and then my other general thoughts. If you want to watch the trailer for yourself, then click the link in the description. The trailer looks promising and Haven City does look decent, although which character is narrating, I can't be sure. Either it's Commander Root, or the alcoholic sprite from the first book. I warn you, boy. You are not prepared for the truth. Artemis Fowl uses a gun in this movie? I know it's most likely stolen from one of the lower element police units, but the books establish that Artemis is terrible at aiming firearms. But I could totally see Butler using a bow and arrow given that he was trained in all forms of fighting and weaponry. I'm not sure if the woman wearing the white robes is meant to be the drunken sprite who resides in Ho Chi Minh City, but that does not look like a fairy with a body ruined by alcohol. But hey, maybe they'll explain that in the movie. However, if they omit the scene where Butler fights a troll, I'll be severely disappointed. Although I highly doubt that. I gotta say, Ferdia Shaw looks perfect as Artemis Fowl. The stride, the attitude, it looks really awesome! Plus he's being played by an actual Irish kid, which is great! I know fans have been wanting Asa Butterfield to play him, but he is a little too old for the role. Heck, if they decided to do a movie about a young Tom Riddle, they should cast Ferdia as the Dark Lord to be. However, there are some problems with the casting choices for the other characters. Casting Judy Dench as Commander Root of the Lep Recon unit, in my opinion, derails Holly Short's story arc of proving that females are capable of being badass recon officers. Gee, it's like there isn't already an existing female commander character like, I don't know, Wing Commander Vinyea? Sure, she only appears in later books, but she could have appeared in a flashback as Holly's flight instructor. Based on Root's personality in the books, I think J.K. Simmons would have been a better choice to play Root. I will mention, however, that Judy Dench has an extensive acting resume including theater and movies such as the James Bond franchise and the movie adaptation of Cats. Yes, that Cats. No way will I see that movie. You can't have Artemis without Butler, and he is being played by Nanso Anazi, who played various characters in movies such as Nanny McPhee in The Big Bang, Cinderella, and Ender's Game, making Butler and his sister Juliet black even though they're described as white Eurasians in the books. Some of the cover art clearly show that Butler is a white Eurasian. Now, before you leave comments calling me a racist, this is the problem I had with the Netflix Death Note movie. They cast Light and his family as white Americans, even though they were Japanese in the manga, anime, and the Japanese live-action movies. Normally, I wouldn't have a problem with these casting choices, but this is the first ever adaptation of the book series, so they shouldn't deviate the character's ethnicity or gender. The reason I don't really care about some of the characters in the MCU Spider-Man series being portrayed by people of color is because there already exist two other live-action Spider-Man movie franchises. For some reason, they decided to cast Josh Gad as the fairy dwarf Mulch Diggums, even though there are other actors who could probably play him better. One of them being Gilbert Gottfried. I always pictured that guy playing the kleptomaniac dwarf. But I guess Disney wants Josh Gad and everything. Despite what I said earlier, if these cast members give a great performance as their respective characters, I'll gladly retract my statements. I can only hope that the movie will try to be as faithful to the book as possible despite all these changes. 
Maybe they'll say that Holly Short is the youngest captain of the Lep Recon unit. Who knows? I am going to see this movie when it comes out. Hopefully my brother will tag along since he introduced me to the books a few years ago. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some Black Butler to binge watch.